Okay, just taking a little break here from um, some of the videos that I've been doing just for another kind of a show-and-tell type of uh, video. I was going through some uh, of my magazines, and I have a lot of them uh, over the years, um, all rubber stamp based, but I also happen to have some other types of, uh, of uh, books like this rubber stamp source book. I'll go I'll flip through these uh, a little bit uh, in this video here, but look at this art stamp journal. It's kind of a, a zine put out, but the, the ones that I picked out are kind of from the mid 90s um, and, uh, and before that. Here's Rubber Stamper's World, 1996, and here's a National Stampographic, uh, 1994. But uh, one of the ones I'm going to start off with here is the Rubber Stamp Mandis, and you can see how large this uh, this magazine was. I don't know if I'm even getting it all in the uh, the field of uh, view here on the camera, but. Um, uh, these were huge. I, I think they call this a, like the tabloid size um, magazine. I don't know if you, any of you are familiar with this one magazine that used to be on the newsstands called Interview, but um, those ones were really big as well. And um, that was really fun about Rubber Stamp Madness. They were huge, but uh, you know, this is how, I mean, this is how it came. You know, um, with the uh, um, uh, your subscription here. That's my old address, but this used to be in New York. They've been out of uh, Oregon for really quite some time now, but um, look how huge this thing was. And this is issue number 60. Um, I think it came out four times a year. Yeah, I, I could be mistaken. Back then, I, I'm not really sure if it was uh, every three or four months or something like that. Then I think it switched over to um, bi-monthly or whatnot, but um, November, December, 1991, um, and uh, this is, if you were a stamper back then, you pretty much subscribed to Rubber Stamp Madness. I mean, every manufacturer advertised in there, just about, um, and uh, it seemed like every stamper subscribed to um, Rubber Stamp Madness, but um, there's just kind of going over a few little things here. This is a stamp of the hand company, and um, <laughs> you can see a couple of my, er, you know, early uh, nature designs here. I think I call that one Starry Night or something like that, and Snowy Trees or something like that. But that was a little, I don't know what size that is, a little eighth page uh, advertisement down here, but um, I don't know, all kinds of kind of funky designs uh, from different companies back then. That's all she stamped. There were a lot of different stores that were out at that time, but it's just kind of interesting seeing some of the different projects that were uh, being done at that time. Here's some shrink plastic, you know, that was kind of a uh, that had been out for a long time, but then they started using it in rubber stamping a lot. Um, but you can see the different types of, uh, I don't know, the articles that they were doing at the time. This is one of my uh, favorite companies right here. I don't have a lot of their designs, but I really like them. Imagineer. I mean, I have a few of them, but it seems like I started trying to get some of these uh, designs kind of after the fact, you know, after they were kind of already gone. But... Um, they were really cool. They had a, a lot of cool aviation designs, really tight, detailed. Um, talking about making their mark. This is someone in uh, England, a little uh, stamp store there. But uh, what I wanted to get to, I kind of looked through here earlier. I was thinking, gosh, mostly animals. They had some really beautiful, beautiful looking stamps in terms of the uh, construction of the illustrations, too, of course. but. You can see some of these, um, uh, these are recipe cards that someone had, you know, done. It looks like the same person. I didn't read all the articles, you know, when that came out. But um, one of the things that occurred to me, like, um, um, when I was looking through here was um, everything. Okay, now, like this right here. Here's your Christmas spread right here, right? And... If you notice here, 
everything is stamped, okay? Be it, you know, a, a rubber stamp or an, it's like an eraser carving possibly right here, but here's their big spread for Christmas um, types of, you know, uh, cards or whatever, stamping projects, I guess you say. But if you notice on here, Unless I'm not seeing something, I don't see a single embellishment on here. It was just pure stamping. And again, this is in 1991, so you know what I mean? It just If anything went on a card, I would say 99%, or no, 95%, it was just pure imagery being stamped out. You weren't embellishing things. And I mean, these cards aren't even kind of like matted and mounted on something else. I, I don't think. This right here is probably a piece of uh, yellow paper, but it might not be. Someone might have colored that and uh, stamped that. I don't know. But, um, you know, that's the difference, right? You know, a lot of his embellishments these days based around kind of a stamped image or something like that. Or that's what it turned into in some ways. Um, so you can see just the just the pure form of it. A lot of people who stamped back then too um, did a lot of envelopes. There was just tons of envelopes, you know, because we everyone mailed each other. It was the Museum of Modern Rubber. That was a fantastic company. Really cool imagery, but look at this Marvy markers right here. La plumes and uh, I don't know, La Plume twos brush markers um, down here, but um, pretty much if you were a stamper back then too, you really knew your Marvy colors, you know, like, oh, what color did you use on it? I, I used a number, you know, a number 10 blue or something like that, or, or is that a, is that a 34 or is that a, you know, whatever, you know, but people really knew their, uh, their colors. I don't know if at the time, like, stamp pads were out. You know, not the type that we use now, like the raised pads, you know. So it was a lot of coloring it up of uh, with markers, you know, like these. This one's probably from back then. It's probably 20 years old because it's the old case. But um, anyway, uh, look at this. Magna stamp. Probably one of the first types of uh, non-wood ones, I'm guessing. So, um, now, I don't know. Here's, here's little die base pads right here. Who's this from? Oh, it's from Claire Snap. You know, I think they were one of the first kind of raised pad companies with their uh, Vivid line and uh, I don't know. This one's called Brush Box. But, um, I don't know. It's a, like a trip down memory lane here. Here's the color box. Uh, uh, pigment ink pads. The, those rainbow types like that. Uh, those sure made a big splash when those ones came out. But look at this right here, uh, oak stamp chest right here, you know. You know, back then I mean, it was all wood, except that magnetic one. I don't know how that uh, did, but uh, stamp of Barbara, my gosh. If you were a rubber stamper back then, what you did, you subscribed to Rubber Stamp Madness for sure. And then if you could, you made a trip to um, like the Carson rubber stamp convention where if you were a manufacturer, you tried to get into that show because there weren't too many shows um, around the country. And uh, all the stamp stores that were opening up would go to that convention, you know, as in terms of their kind of yearly trick. Now these days it's... Um, CHA or something like that, or it turned into CHA, HIA and CHA, you know, in terms of uh, seeing what was out there and um, placing orders for your stores and whatnot. But like, you know, again, there weren't too many stores at this time either. But what I'm getting at is uh, besides those two things, you know, Rubber Stamp Madness and the Carson con uh, Rubber Stamp Convention, uh, a lot of people would do the Carson uh, or stamp convention, but they'd also try to get up to Santa Barbara to go to Stampa Barbara, and that was like the uh, place for um, uh, rubber stamp retailing, you know, in terms of uh, just the sheer amount of uh, inventory they carry. I, I think they, they almost carried everyone, you know, and if they didn't, they tried to, and uh, 
I don't know, it was like the entire industry was represented. Plus, they had, I don't know, tens of thousands of uh, images themselves because they only had their own line, but they would buy out a lot of companies that were already going out of business. So they had just a ton of images and uh, <clears throat> product on their shelves. This one was probably the old... No, this was already in the new location, Paseo Nuevo. But uh, interesting stuff. This is, besides... Um, Rubber Stamp Madness, um, going back in the 80s, I think National Standard Graphic was, uh, I could be mistaken, but I thought it was the only other publication for um, Rubber Stamps. This is an issue where I was just coming out with Stampscapes really early on, and they gave me a nice spread. It was like a cover spread. This one's all black and white right here. Oh, here I did the back cover as well. Um, but uh, all black and white, so it was like kind of a, a really nice, you know, zine almost. But um, it turns out that they were really close to where I used to live, too, because it was just, I don't know, by coincidence that we were kind of lived in the exact same city. So I remember when I did this artwork, I just took it right over to their house, which is a couple miles from me. But... Um, I don't know, all kinds of, uh, here's the Stampscape scoop, you know, there's a little scene that I did there. It was tricky because I had to do it all in black and white, and I wasn't quite sure if they used um, half tones. that's where you kind of take a, uh, you know, a grayscale, you know, things that actually has gray in it, you know, not just spread out dots, so I had to come up with these different, um, pieces here that were already kind of broken down into what they call line art. So um, I didn't used to take out color ads in magazines either, so a lot of it was black and white because most of the magazines didn't have, like, it, they weren't all color at that time, so color was really, you know, at that time it was really expensive to do, so I would do black and white ads. So these, if I'm not mistaken, I think the all four of these were um, uh, previous ads that I had done. So, anyway, um, little ads here and there. There's our own laminating machine. <laughs> um, stamp exchanges, people would take out ads to do a little scene exchange or whatever, envelopes. Um, uh, mail art, they called it. Oh, okay, these are half tones right here. It's grayscale kind of broken down. But the Great American Stamp Store, National Stampographic Society, um, Happy Birthday Club. I guess if you put your name and address on here along with your birthday, maybe people would send you a birthday card or something like that. But that's, a, you know, that's the way uh, stampers are, aren't they, you know? You know, exchanging, doing projects, giving things away, things like that. These are pen pal ads in the back here. Because like I said, this is kind of like a zine back then, you know? Um, just on, you know, or some really nice papers and whatnot. But, um, yeah, right in Huntington Beach, so... Um, right up here, not, they didn't have gel pens back in the day, but I used the, uh, uh, white paint pen. I keep mistakenly saying white paint pen when I'm doing my videos, even today, because I used to use the white paint pen, um, uh, which are like the metallic and gold pens, you know, a lot of these days, they still have them, but I don't know if they have much of the uh, white paint pen, but look at all that snow. I, I did every one of those little dots up there with that and trailing off some snow like that, so... Um, tons of stuff. Rubber Stampers World Magazine, February, March, 1996, for the Rubber Stamp Artist. And, uh, you know, they were able to do two colors. It's almost like embossed on here. I wonder if they did that. I wonder if they printed it in-house, but, um, you know, it, it's possible that they, I don't know, they, did they print this? Or, I don't know, it was like a small run printing, but this is kind of raised here, you know. But, um, different, uh, companies. Um, this is, uh, 
stamps, Arizona stamps too. They had a lot of uh, Native American imagery that went really well with stampscapes. And I don't know what happened to them. They were here one moment and then they were gone the next and everyone was kind of, you know, looking for their um, stuff. This is a, to do a color um, spread in here, they had a, this is like a color laser that they, the editor has just kind of pasted in here. So I think that's kind of cool though. You know, it's just the, the spirit of, uh, I don't know, not entrepreneurship, but just, you know, just everyone that puts these types of things on, you know, are, you know, they're enthusiasts. So it was just kind of cool, you know, these types of, uh, types of products that um, were out at the time. I mean, it's, you know, it's certainly small scale, but they really wanted to get out there and try to share the information and, you know, new developments, you know, in, uh, in uh, stamping. So here's this, I don't know if you can see this, this is called the, the layered card technique, you know, where there, it's like a little, looks like a little pop-up window and, you know, there's uh, <laughs> multiple layers in it, you know, you know, how they did that. So that's, what, yeah, I don't know, that just comes to show you the, uh, kind of the uh, rubber stamp uh, card technology at the time. Oh, this is like using a foam core paper iris, you know, that, the, those layers in there. So paper tab right here, as he stamps with that, I have a little paper tab so you can kind of fold that up and kind of have it popping out, you know, high tech stuff, you know, back then. Little pop-ups right here. Um, yeah, materials needed for stair steps. So, just the sharing of information. But this is the way you got that type of information back then, you know? No internet, you know? This is, well, 1996, you're starting to get there a little bit, but not really, you know? People weren't uploading a bunch of, like, digital photos or something like that, you know? We we're all on dial-up. I think around that time there was things like Prodigy and online communities like that, but I don't think it was the sharing of like imagery. It would take, you know, if I was to, you know, scan this or something like that and put, you know, throw it up in uh, 72 DPI at a, you know, an upload rate at what was that, like at 128K or that was probably fast for the time, you know, that thing might be uploading for 12 hours. And then to view it, you know, it would take even longer. So, I, I you know, I don't know. Now this is called Stamp Stories. Looks like a Canadian uh, publication. Well, I don't know. Yeah, probably. This, this person's in Alberta, but these little zines like this, you know, were popping up back in the day. Some you heard about, some you didn't. Some They would advertise the zine maybe in the back of, I don't know, some other publication if they allowed them to. I'm not really sure. I don't know if they saw it as uh, competition or whatnot, but... Yeah, I recognize a lot of these stores in here, like uh, Great Impressions, or I don't know if they're a store or manufacturer. Hot Potatoes, looks like they advertised in there. So it was kind of interesting, you know, a lot of times back then too. You know, I, I might not have heard of like a zine like this, so you got these, um, you know, um, advertisement kind of uh, inquiries, you know, would you like to advertise in our in our publication or whatnot. Here's the advertisers index right here. Rubber Stamps of America. Great stuff. And some retailers that I knew. Here's some uh, kind of scenic stamping um, imagery here in the back. Great, in, great Canadian stamp, you know. It's kind of cool. It's kind of a nice um, fence right there. Art stamp journal. You know, more kind of a your zine types of things. There's a resource directory in the back and advertising like a stamp of the hand uh, was advertising there. They had a store in the mall at the time. It looks like they're uh, promoting um, history of rubber and art stamps. So that's the history of it right then. And this is uh, 1996. I don't know, I'll have to read that sometime. It looks like it's going back to, uh, I'm not going to read through this whole thing, but it's talking about like uh, I don't know, uh, rubber plants. Here's Christopher Columbus right here. And excavations in Mexico show the Mayan nar uh, natives were playing sort of basketball with a rubber ball, you know. You know. So I guess they're talking about the uh, 
the usage of rubber at the time. Here's 1923. Or here's Charles Goodyear, right? Product and reviews, white pigment pad. Wow. Uh, here's I put out by Hero Arts right here. Studio 2 markers. I used to use those ones all the time. Um, those were the... Uh, the first alcohol-based markers. Look at this set that I have of the Studio 2s, but um, Studio 2 markers, this is like pre-Copic, you know, days right here. And I think I, I don't know when I got this one, but I love these uh, Studio 2s, double-sided like the uh, like the Laplumes or something like that, right? Here's a kind of a chisel nib right, uh, right here. And then you had your kind of narrow tip right there, okay? But the Studio 2s, you would get a certain color, right? And then if you can see uh, there, I thought I put some color on my hand. This is a number 67, but you say it says 10%. So you can get these different pens like this in whatever hue you wanted. But you can also get it in whatever value. Like this is a, these are 60% down here, and this is a 10%. So you know how I like to use like a lot of light tones, right? Well, these 10% were perfect for that, um, and getting kind of detailed and kind of building your color slowly. Now, Studio 2 is not out there, so don't look for that. Or, I don't know. I don't think they are. But uh, what a beautiful case, too, that was. I think the, all those pens are all dried out, though. You know, alcohol tends to dry out um, fast. But uh, Kaleida color pads, those ones that, you know, you can spread them apart. But um, I don't know. Yeah, like I said, these little zines were really cool back in the day. It was, you know, it was where you were in the real early days. So if you did if you practically did anything with a rubber stamp, you know, that was a little bit different than you're, you know, you're just breaking new ground at the time, you know. Um, if someone went to, um, like, an art store or something like that and grabbed something off, you know, a traditional art supply as opposed to crafting or stamping supply, um, and if you used it on stamp, suddenly, you're, you know, you're a huge, great innovator or whatnot. But um, Stamper's Profiles here, um, ads, kind of cool things. Okay, Rubber Stamp Sourcebook here. This is put out by David Ward, and he was doing something really new at the time. You know, there, this is, you know, I don't even know what, what year this is. Let me see if I could find a date. This, I think, is this the second one? It might be the first, I'm not sure, but, uh, so this, that means that this probably came out, yeah, this is 1995, okay? But his idea here was that, you know, you had all these rubber stamp companies coming out at the time. You can get rubber stamp madness or something like that, and then there's, you know, the different ads with the different addresses, um, in there. But, um, what he did was he kind of compiled a lot of whoever wanted to take out an, like an ad in this uh, publication here and you can take out I don't know one or two page uh, thing and what you do is you just arrange all of your whatever sampling of imagery you wanted to put in there you put the code numbers you can do whatever you wanted on your pages this is a la art here this is some cool imagery here but um, this is like a stamp of the hand this is these were three designs, three of my designs right here. People wouldn't know me for my uh, butterflies, hearts, and garlands probably, you know, for the most part. But I used to do all types of things like that, you know. Um, things like that, and they would use this as, you know, on, uh, you know, party tags and whatnot, you know, Christmas things, a little envelope and emboss it or something like that. Well, not Christmas, but this is uh, like Valentine's Day or something like that. But anyways, um, different companies here, um, going throughout, right? And I thought I dog-eared my own page here, yeah. 
Here's my page right here. I just took out a one page thing here. I just stack those up and whatnot. Kind of like in a little... <laughs> it's not really scenic, but uh, I don't know. I, I thought that would, I don't know, give a, kind of a, a good idea of what we're kind of about, you know, in terms of landscape imagery. And I don't know when I submitted that, but uh, it was probably, maybe it was in 1994, and that was right really early on when I first started Stampscapes. But uh, some great stuff, Rubber Baby Buggy Bumpers, Rolling Bay Rubber, some of these companies I don't even remember, but uh, I sure like all of their designs. These are like all carvings here. Quarter Moon, wow. Posh, everyone knows Posh and D. Paper Source, but anyways, what happened here here too is um, it's the Rubber Stamp Source book, right? So it's not only different companies, but I don't know, they go into uh, different techniques. And they go stamping in chocolate right here. Um, Mail art, it kind of explains what uh, mail art was, you know, that was the stamping of the envelopes that you're sending out to uh, different people or like pen pals and whatnot. Uh, wholesale only companies, that looks like some, maybe some of these companies did the wholesale and retail, look, yeah, Hampton Art, they would probably just be doing, yeah, Hero Arts, the larger companies like that, Hippo Heart, hmm, they only did wholesale. Huh? Uh, Rubber stamp stores, okay, and more sources right here, okay. So a lot of stores starting to pop up by the mid '90s. Just looking over these, I'm thinking they were all probably some of them are like a Hallmark shop, you know, but a lot of them were just straight stamping. Okay, I don't think scrapbooking was out there at the time. I don't think any, I don't see anything that says like scrap and whatever, not in the mid nineties, you know, but, um, hmm. I don't know, a lot of stuff in Canada by that time. I don't know if there were dedicated stamp only stores or if they were, yeah, like Quilling World or, or something like that. You know, craft stores, you know, that would sell stamps. Stamp catalogs, okay, this is more sources. Okay, what, how much are the catalogs that you can order from each company? Um, so you can get this book here and, you know, it would take out a lot of the, uh, the work out of you, off of you for looking at stuff, okay? And here's stamps by category. Wow, he went through a lot of work here. So if you're looking for dolls, then you look at these, you know, three companies right here have, you know, doll stamps or whatnot, dinosaurs, Egyptian, uh, small and teddy bears, look at the teddy bear section right here, large images. <laughs> so I guess, I guess what you did was you kind of submitted this, um, I don't know, like code thing, you know, when you submitted your page so that he would have to, you know, <clears throat> break it down into all those different categories right here. Excess suppliers, this isn't just for, um, like if you wanted to start a stamp company, there's um, places in here that have different machines, I guess, to make stuff. Oh, okay, okay, they're just talking about like uh, accessories, like paper and things like that. Papers for stamping, where do you get that? Artist supply, there weren't a lot of papers being used back then. Okay, here's wood storage units and mount, wood mounts. Okay, so if you wanted to start your own company, you can look in here and, you know, see if they have like, things like vulcanizers and wood blocks and whatever, yeah, classic mounts. Um, Pens Uchida of America, you know. This guy did a lot of work. This guy is David Ward. Mail art, okay, if you want to do like exchanges and things like that. Um, stamp clubs, believe it or not. If you, want, if you live around Atlanta and you want to, you know, join a stamp club, you can look in here, you know, and see what was around you, if there was any or something like that. 
computer bulletin boards. Look at this. America Online, CompuServe, Genie. I forgot all about that name. Prodigy, you know. You can go online and, uh, you know, uh, chat. Go in a chat room with someone. Quick reference columns. Gosh, this is really broken down. Rubber stamps A to Z. And you can see the different categories for what uh, those places... Um, what types of imagery they uh, sold. What is this, the inside scoop? How to order for each company with their, oh my gosh, they had like the prices for all the coding for the different um, companies. So if you look in here and uh, you know, Imagic Limited and there's a 041, 101S, you'd have to look and, you know, you'd see that company in here, and then there would be this uh, chart showing how much those were, so that you can order those images, you know, from that company and know the, uh, the price they're shipping and handling right there, and how much their catalogs were. So, uh, I forgot all this. Look at this rubber bucks. If you cut out these, that's a, like a buck right there. So if you cut out that and then you send it in with your order, I guess, you can use one dollar per order, it says. I was gonna say, what's gonna stop people from just copying this off? Right here, but, um, yeah, I don't, that's the, like, totally illegal to, uh, copy that, uh, dollar like that. <laughs> but, uh, but that was stamping back then. Here's a universal order form where you can place your orders with these, you know, these different companies in here. It's kind of rubber buck one dollar if applicable because back then you used to get that's how we used to get your orders it was mostly through the mail unless someone was like phoning it in or something like that but most of it was like coming in you know uh, whatever snail mail but um bibliography videos you know the videos that were available at the time in terms of instructions here's the magazines right here um, that were devoted to rubber stamp. There's a lot more of them here than I thought, but some of them aren't just uh, stamping their um, uh, like mail art or something like that. Um, but uh, anyways, this is kind of an interesting book for those rubber stamp enthusiasts that are kind of curious about. I don't know. It's a young history, you know, when you're talking about, you know, most of the stuff that's been developed as far as um, rubber stamping went. You know, we're talking about the last, you know, from the mid, you know, early 90s. It was around in the 80s, of course, you know, but just in terms of the kind of the industry of it, you know, as far as um, what was available uh, or what became available in terms of the... Uh, uh, I don't know, the different offerings out there by different companies and whatnot. Eh, this is this is $20 back in the day, but, um, you know, like I said, if you were a stamper back then, something like this, you know, with all that information in the back, that really helped, you know. I don't know, it, I was sending out for catalogs too, so, I don't know, I might have looked in here, I was probably looking at it out of Rubber Stamp Madness or whatever, but, um, Anyways, little, well, that wasn't that quick um, of a show and tell, but um, I don't know. I thought I'd get some of that stuff down. You don't see uh, a lot of these uh, types of companies and publications, you know, um, have come and gone, you know, gumball graphics. Um, but uh, I don't know. It's kind of interesting for me to look back at this and... Uh, look through and see what was available, you know, it seems like, you know, not too long ago, but, um, you know, at this point in time, we're talking decades, and, uh, I don't know, I, I used to see these people, you know, rubber stamping is kind of a small community, relatively speaking, so, um, it just kind of brings back memories, uh, looking through this and seeing maybe some of these different companies at, um, the different conventions back when. So anyways, uh, rubber stamp source book. You might be able to find these types of things on eBay these days or whatnot. But anyways, or a used bookstore in the craft section. I used to find some things like that once in a while and I'd pick them up.
Um, anyways, hope you enjoyed that uh, little rundown, uh, quick return, or whatever you'd call it, down memory lane, stamping memory lane.